Okay. So please turn your Bible to the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 32 to 34. And let us read from this uh, passage. <clears throat> verse 32. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem. And Jesus was walking ahead of them. The disciples were astonished, astonished and astonished but those who followed him were afraid taking the 12 aside again he began to tell them the things that would hap happen to him verse 33 see we are going up to jerusalem the son of man will be handed over to the chief priest and the scribes and they will condemn him to death then they will hand him over to the gentiles and they will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And he will rise after three days. Let us uh, let us pray once again. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, our Father in Heaven, thank you for uh, this wonderful day which we are here gathered in your name to celebrate your goodness. You know us personally. And I ask that you may pour out your blessings to each individual who is joining this online worship celebration. May the Holy Spirit continue to fill us with your presence as we dive into your word. May you remove anything that hinders us from understanding your word, especially the sin in us, and replace it with, with a sound mind. May you speak to us as we Open our hearts and minds before you. Let your anointing flow to your servant down to its to every person who is here right now. We declare that your will be done. We ask everything through your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, our excitement is in, in something results for us to think more often you cannot sleep well, and you are nervous about it. Last week, we decided to have our family vacation before Eunice heads back to college. We also celebrated our wedding anniversary as well as Father's Day, going on a road trip to the states of Washington and Oregon. When you are on a road trip, you feel excited about where to go the next day. And don't even care about the tiredness caused by traveling and lack of sleep. You are curious about the place you are exploring. And in our case, driving with a 20-year-old car, you need to have faith that you will reach every destination safe and sound. We thank God for his provision. Here we are. We are back home safe. See, when you are traveling, there are a lot of things that may come to mind. What if our car dies or we get into an accident? Or what if we get COVID? As we travel in this world, no matter what happens, each of us will have, will have to face a day where it is our last. Have you asked this question to yourself? What will happen when that day comes? And this is our the title of our message, when that day happen or when that day has come. I believe no one in this world is very excited to talk about his or his, his or her own death. As much as possible, we don't want to talk about it. Why? Because it's either we are afraid or clueless about what will happen? Today, we are going to remember Jesus' own word about his death and how we can apply it in our daily lives before it happens to us. Here in our text, Jesus mentioned his death for the third time. If you will be asked what kind of death you want to experience, what will you choose? Only God knows when and where and what kind of death a person will experience, like what he told to Peter in John 21, verse 18 to 19a. 
very truly I tell you, when you are when you were younger, you dress yourself, and when you were and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Verse 19 says, Jesus said to this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Jesus told Peter how he will die and glorify God. Peter was crucified upside down according to church history. He requested to be crucified upside down for he felt not worthy to be crucified like his Lord. Jesus foretold of Peter's death just as it happened. God wants you to glorify him even what, with, what, with the, the kind of death you are going to have. And what kind of death is that? When death finds us doing the will of God. Jesus' death on the cross is God's will for him. In which among Jesus' preaching, even his death is one of them. A message that he wanted to clarify to many, especially to his disciples. That the purpose of why he was born and the reason why he lived was to die on the cross. There are many things in life that happens that, it, that is sometimes hard to explain and one of them is death. Everybody has their own version of departing from this world, but not everyone fulfills their mission. Death is supposed to be the graduation of our life here on earth, where we finish every task God has appointed to us, appointed us to do. If you are a believer of Christ, this is the message that we should share to others, the message of Jesus' death. It is so important to remind us, ourselves daily about the death of Jesus, what, we, what he did to his disciples when that day has come, his last day here on earth. Here in live stream, we have this Lord's Supper every Sunday to remember what Jesus did for us. But you know what? In the early church, they do this every day. In Acts chapter 2, verse 46 tells us, every day, the Bible says, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. We should remember the Lord's sacrifice, his death, resurrection, and second coming daily. Before Jesus was crucified and died on the cross, he gave this warning to his disciples about what will happen to him in Jerusalem. Why did Jesus keep on telling his disciples about these things? He told them these things so that when it happens, they will believe in him. John 14, 29, he said, I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe. Never stop telling others about Christ until they believe. Because the purpose of God's word is for us to believe in Jesus. From the very first day you heard God's word up to the last day of your life on earth, it is for you to believe in Jesus. Last Tuesday, after our English uh, Bible study, there was a question that was asked from our website about salvation. Based on Hebrew chapter 9, verse 28, it says there, So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Based on this text, are we saved now or still waiting to be saved? Why do we need to wait for Jesus to come to be saved? Those who believe and receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, as the Bible said, are saved. Remember that our salvation is by faith and going to heaven is through Jesus. Jesus is coming back to fulfill his promise. And we, when he comes back, that is to take with him those who are saved. Don't you forget that he will also be saving us from the wrath of God that will be poured out into this world. 
when we die, we will die once. And after that, judgment. Judgment were to go eternally, whether in the lake of fire or in heaven. There's a good news. Jesus received God's punishment on the cross. And those who believe in him will no longer be under his punishment. And on his coming back, he will take all those who believe in him to heaven as he promised. So we have this assurance that when we die, we will inherit eternal life because of Jesus. The question now is, what do we need to do before our own death happens? Have you noticed Jesus' reaction regarding to God's plan of his death? As the Bible says, he was prepared. Before that day has come, be prepared. Be prepared. We need to be prepared. Whether it is your physical death or the coming of Jesus before we leave this world, we need to have a preparation. Biblically, it is the groom who is preparing the, his bride. God is preparing us. The question we sh that we should ask ourselves is, am I giving myself to God's preparation? We should give ourselves to God's way of preparing us. And how to prepare ourselves? As the Bible says we need to walk ahead of others. What does it mean? Jesus walked ahead of them, as the Bible says in verse 32, according to our text. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. Because Jesus knew what lays ahead, it, it never slows him down. Rather, he walked ahead of them, showing he is ready for it to happen. When you are doing God's will, knowing that your day is about to come, your walk with God becomes more ahead compared to others. You never waste your time, but each day becomes meaningful. Like Jesus, our life will become an example for others to follow as we begin to lead someone. So here in, in, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 12, there are lists that we can follow how to prepare ourselves. And let us read. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endures the cross. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So the Bible says in this passage, we need to throw off everything. Throw off everything. When you walk ahead of others, it means you are throwing off everything that hinders. In verse 1 says that we need to throw off everything that hinders that those sin, even those sin that so easily entangles. When the ship is facing a hard time in the sea, the best solution not to sink is to throw off everything to make it lighter. When you are facing troubles in life, the best thing to do to survive is to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that entangles us. We need to begin to throw off everything that hinders us from our faith and get rid of every sin that is, or that uh, the sin that so easily entangles. Secondly, to walk ahead of others is we need to run well, with perseverance. As the Bible says, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Every believer experiences discouragement. Do you, can you say amen to that? It, it slows us down. Do you agree with that? It, it slows us down with our walk with God. But remember this, we all need to run with perseverance in the race that God has appointed us. No matter what happens, 
no matter what lays ahead of us, we need to run the race until we finish it. Never say this to the person next to you. Never get discouraged. Never give up. No turning back. Run the race with perseverance. And thirdly, we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. You always hear this passage many, many times. We need to fix our eyes in Jesus. It is so important that we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Church, as the bride of Christ, don't ever look onto others. Rather, keep your eyes on the groom. There is no person in which we should fix our eyes onto rather than Jesus. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He has begun our faith and we cannot bring our faith to completion away from him. When our eyes is fixed on Jesus, we will imitate him. We will have joy, as the Bible says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of, of, of the throne of God. If you are doing anything out of joy, you, you will endure everything. The joy that set before Jesus led him to endure the cross, scorning its shame and honored by God, the Father in heaven. The joy which is the a fruit of the Holy Spirit will lead us to overcome any trials that we face every day until we reach the place God has planned for us. Secondly, if we fix our eyes on Jesus, remember this, you need to consider him. Consider him. Who do you consider when you are persecuted because of your faith in Christ? As the Bible says, consider him, consider Jesus who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Church, do you want to not be weary and lose heart? Consider Jesus. Consider him as your example. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. Have you been opposed by someone because of your faith in Jesus? Consider Jesus always so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus conquered everything. And so we will, and so will we who believe in him. Because the Bible says we are more than conquerors. The Apostle Paul mentioned in the book of Romans chapter 8. He said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You know what? Satan is trying to separate us from the love of Christ. Every day, every hour, every minute, every single second. He wants us to be separated from the love of Christ. That's why we experience trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, or even death. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a ship to be slaughtered. But the Bible says in verse 33, or 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loved us. If Jesus overcame sin, even death, we also, we will also overcome death when we live in this world. So consider Jesus when you are experiencing the opposition from the sinners or we say ungodly, consider Jesus who endured. Okay, secondly, that we need to do is after we walk ahead of others, we need to tell others about Jesus. Tell others about Jesus. So what do we need to tell others about Jesus? About his death. About his death. The message of Jesus' death is for our own salvation and for the salvation of others. We were saved to tell others about this salvation. Jesus' death is our message to tell others. 
A person's death cannot be, I'm sorry, a person's death can be a message to others. Whether you are saved or not, you, your death is a message to others. Why? Because as the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, death is the destiny of everyone. King Solomon wrote, it is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for that is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. I believe many of us have been to a funeral service where we pay respect and give our sympathy to the bereaved. We should take that to our heart seriously, especially the death of Jesus. As the Bible says, it is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting. When you learn the importance of death, you will live wisely. Because life is not only about celebration, but also of precaution because it is our destiny when we uh, heard of the passing of someone or attend a funeral service we take a moment of realizing that someday maybe it is our last day thinking of how we would die and what will happen next when a person dies during this pandemic he or she dies alone where the loved ones will only see the ashes of the remains. Remember this, when you put your trust in the Lord, you will never die alone. Since the time you believe in Jesus and receive him as your Lord and Savior, you're ne you never walk alone until the moment you close your eyes and face your own death. So I want to tell you this, that there are, Two messages about Jesus' death. To remember this and to tell this to others. That Jesus died for you. Say this from your heart. Jesus died for me. Once again, say this. Jesus died for me. Unless you understand the reason of his death, you will also understand your purpose in life. Unlike the common reason of death, Jesus, uh, Jesus' reason was unique. Because why? Because Jesus died. Jesus' death was promised. His, uh, since the fall of man, God's redemptive work was revealed that God himself will clothe us to cover our sin. If you read the, the book of Genesis chapter 3, the Lord God made clothing from skins for the man and his wife, and he clothed them. The Bible didn't mention what kind of animal, or if God killed one, but it is clear that he made a garment out of animal skin to clothe Adam and Eve. The garment that God made to clothe Adam and Eve represents the foretold redemptive uh, work of God. Because the prophet Isaiah mentioned in, in the book of Isaiah 61 says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord. I exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of righteousness as a groom wears a turban and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. It is God alone who can save us. And clothe us with his righteousness. That through God's redemptive work in Jesus Christ, we are now saved. If we believe and will be with the Lord forever, whether we are here on earth or even after life on earth. So never doubt God on his promise of salvation. It was promised and fulfilled on the cross 2,000 years ago. Also, the message of Jesus dying for us is his death is to cure. 
Remember this, we are all sick in need of a physician. Jesus' death is to cure the incurable from spiritual to physical. His death brought healing to our spiritual and physical illness. The sin that causes us or that causes them all. But the Apostle Peter wrote in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, he, Jesus himself, bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. And by his wounds, you have been healed. No illness can put you to death unless it is the day God has appointed to be your last. Our death as a believer of Christ is no longer bound to the power of sin, but bound to what Jesus did on the cross. If God will say, come home, then you will come home. Amen? Also, we need to tell others about Jesus' resurrection. And they will mock him. The Bible says, Jesus said, the Son of Man will be arrested in Jerusalem. They will mock him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him, and will rise after three days. That day was not only about mourning, but also of celebration. In hearing this, as the other passage said, that the disciples were full of grief. As Jesus was speaking about his suffering and death, his conclusion is that he will rise after three days. In this life, the problem with many believers, maybe even in, in here in live stream, is we only focus on our suffering, but do not focus. We do not focus on the life after death. Jesus' heart was full of joy because his focus was on his resurrection. So the message that we should focus on to encourage us, especially in difficult times, is Jesus' resurrection. Jesus' resurrection gives us hope that one day when we die, we will also rise up from the dead. And say this to the person next to you. Look at the person next to you and say, say this. You will never die. Say this once again. You will never die. And how is that? In John chapter 11, when Jesus confronted Mary because Lazarus was dead for four days already and Jesus wanted to raise him up. But Mary said, Lord, he was dead for four days now. And Jesus' response to, to her is this, that I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Let us take this, this passage seriously. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. If you believe in Jesus, as he said into this passage, if you will believe, the one who, will, who believes in me will live. Because we believe on Jesus who is the author of life, who is the, resur the resurrection and the life, we will live. Jesus said, even though they die, even though they die, they will live. And whoever lives, by believing in me, will never die. The question that we should ask, that the same question that asked uh, to, to Mary is this, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe that you will never die? Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that when you die, you will live again and believe in that believe what jesus said that when that day has come 
we have assurance of eternal life. When that day come, we will not be afraid because we put our trust to the one who is in charge of everything. And as I conclude this message, we don't know when God is taking us home. But one thing for sure, he has already prepared everything for us. When that day has come, may it find us not with fear, but the excitement of what God has prepared for us. As I challenge you this morning, church, may this message be kept in our hearts. To fear God who judges all, that when, it, when that day has come, we will face him with thankful hearts of what he did for us. Not to punish us, but to keep us. Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for reminding us that life, our life on earth is short and one day we will depart from it. Help us to prepare ourselves for that day when you set our last day here on earth that we will not be surprised but ready for it. Like the Lord Jesus, help us to focus on the resurrection our hope in which you promise to those who are waiting for him. Help us to meditate always in Jesus' death and resurrection as we also tell others about this good news. May our life, even our death, give glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.